follows me everywhere I go. Man, it's good to see all of you tonight. Glad that you're here uh, for this evening. I don't know that we've had uh, a Thursday night that I can remember where we had an altar call right in the middle. Have we? That's new, isn't it? That's new. They called an audible. Man, it is great to see you tonight. My name is Jody Ray. I'm the person that I believe uh, Denise Ivey introduced. I, I don't know if that was quite me. I, was, uh, I hope I can live up to that. That was very kind, and I, and I thank you. And it's great to see all of you. As I look across this room, I see uh, wonderful friends from Galanaga to Mount Bethel and now um, my home in Stockbridge, Georgia. And I am, uh, again, honored to be here. I want to read a passage of Scripture to you tonight, and I want us to look at Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 13 of chapter 5, and I'm going to read over to uh, the first part of 7 in chapter 6. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, a man stood opposite of him with sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said, Are you for us or are you for our adversaries? So he said, No, but as commander of the army of the Lord I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face uh, to the earth, and he worshipped. And he said to him, What does my Lord say to his servant? Then the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Take your sandal off your foot, for you, this place where you, are, where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and uh, the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear the seven trumpet of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a, a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up, every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was, when Joshua had spoken to the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn before the Lord advanced, and they blew the trumpet, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Let us pray. God, I'm thankful today for this passage of Scripture. God, I pray that it would have an impact on our lives tonight, God. Lord, that in it we, we would see um, the keys, if you will, to uh, breaking down the walls of our lives so that we can advance and move into the land of victory. God, I pray that, uh, that the words of my mouth would go much farther than just the words of a simple preacher, but they'd be empowered by your Holy Spirit and they'd have an effect on us. I pray, God, that it'd be impossible absolutely impossible that anyone should come into this place and leave the same way in which they came in God but that we all might be changed change us and mold us and make us God whom you are calling us to be in the mighty name of Jesus we pray and everybody said amen you know the story this is a, a one of those uh, great stories in the Bible and as a matter of fact I'll tell you this that every single Christian should master the book of Joshua. We should read it and study it and get to know it because in it are some keys that we all need to know of how to deal with the world and how to deal with the flesh and how to deal with the devil. I, I, I would assume tonight that there's probably some folks in here that may need a breakthrough. Anybody in here tonight? Anybody need some walls to fall down? Anybody need some doors to open tonight? Anybody in here tonight needs something to happen miraculous so that you can advance into a new place and into a new life and into a new realm. Anybody in here like that tonight? 
Come on, I, 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 this ain't Sunday morning, this is Thursday night. Amen. Anybody in here tonight need some walls to fall? See, I don't know about you, but we need some walls to fall around my house. We need some things to happen. We need uh, some dancing to take place and some shouting to take place and some walls to crumble and some things to happen around us. So I'm going to let you know tonight, I'm preaching to myself. Is that okay? That's selfish, isn't it? Come all the way to Athens, Georgia, and preach a sermon to yourself, but I need it. And I didn't realize I needed it. See, this is how this happens. I, I don't know what it is about Rick, but he calls me, I, I don't know when it was. It was just a few months after the, the last Rekindle the Flame. He said, I want you to uh, speak again on Thursday night. And in a moment, in, the, in, a, in a moment, I knew exactly what I was going to talk about. I just knew it. I, I don't, that's, that's strange. That happens sometimes, but it happens when I'm around him uh, more, than, more times than not. And what I want to talk to you tonight about is the Jericho principle. The Jericho principle. Some keys that we need to know and that we need to understand in order that we might begin to see some walls start falling. That some walls might uh, come tumbling down. That some changes would take place around us in such a powerful way that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it didn't have anything to do with us, but it had every single thing to do with the Lord who is at work. Amen? Amen. I, I realize that in life, God keeps pushing me into these places where uh, human ingenuity won't work. I can't do enough. I can't think enough. I can't know enough people. I can't make enough phone calls. I can't raise enough money. It's something that he has to do and that he wants to do. And you know what ends up happening when all that ha is said and done? He gets the glory. He gets glory. The glory. Well, you know the, the story. The, the, the Israelites, they've come to the end of a long journey. They've been wandering around in the desert for uh, some 40 years, and now they are standing on the edge of the promised land. I mean, they are standing there looking in, see it, know it, everything that's ever been told about them, the stories that were told all those years while they were wandering in the desert. They're standing there, and they are looking at it. The, the promise that they had received 400 years before is now about to come to fruition in their lives. Do y'all know that uh, the promises of God don't have an expiration date? Do you know that? You, you need to know that tonight. That if you think that you're about out, you're not about out. The, the promises of God don't have an expiration date. And so here they are, standing there, looking in, about to, 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 to move, and then there's a, one small problem. Just, just a small issue. Look, look, Something really small. You know what it's called? Jericho. Jericho. The one thing that's standing between them and God's best for their life, the one thing that's standing between them and their destiny, the, the one thing that is standing between them and the promises is this city called Jericho. And I want you to know tonight that if you are going to enter into the promises of God, if you are going to reach your destiny, if you're going to step into fulfillment, you've got to first go across Jericho. Now notice I didn't say go through it. Because it ain't going to be there. But you've got to go across Jericho in order to step into that place. That's what I want us to talk about tonight. The promises of God are, don't have an expiration date. They don't. And we need to believe tonight and know that God has something powerful for you. God has something powerful to me. I want you to look at a verse that we read just a minute ago. And the Lord said to Joshua... See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and its mighty men of valor. You see tonight, if you're going to step into uh, your, your destiny, if you're going to move into God's best for your life, there are two keys that you need to know and you need to understand, and they're found right here in this verse. The first word that you, you must know tonight is you must understand and know that word, see. Believe me, you do. The second word that you need to know tonight is the word, given. You see, see is a word that comes from a, a Hebrew word, raha. And it means more than just what I can see. It's not just that I can see a stage or I can uh, see you out there and just uh, 
that Zeke, I mean, John, I, I can't, don't need to call him Zeke when we're not by ourselves. Uh, Pastor John and, and, and Kofi over here. It's more than just what I can see. You see, it's to see what, um, what could be there. To see what might be there. To see something that's beyond um, our comprehension is to begin to, to see a picture of what God's best and what God's destiny is for you. Because see, if you can't see it, you can't have it. If you can't visualize it, if you can't see it, you cannot have it. My wife and I sit around, we are just got... We're just an exciting people to hang out with. And we like to watch uh, HGTV at night. Anybody watch HGTV at night? And there's this show that we like to watch, watch the Property Brothers. Y'all ever watch the Property Brothers? Come on, don't make me sound old, all right? All right, Property Brothers. That's a good program. No cussing. It's just a good, solid program. But there's one thing about the Property Brothers that I love. Is they take people into places, into homes. And they show them a picture of what it could be. They, 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 they take them into a home that needs repair, needs work, and they, they begin to show them what it could be. And see, it's, it, they have to sell them on the fact that they can make it look a whole lot better than it looks right now. That they can change it and they can add to it. And so they paint a picture. And you know, tonight, it's kind of like remodeling a house. Our lives are. We, we've got to come to a place where we can begin to see things as they will be or as they could be. You see, you've got to be able to see. You've got to be able to have a vision for what God would have for you. And if you don't have the vision, if you can't see it, then you can't have it. I had this wonderful opportunity to sit with uh, Dr. David Yunji Cho. Do y'all know that name? He's a pastor in uh, Seoul, Korea. He's not just a pastor. He's like the baddest dude I know. Uh, a million people in his church. Uh, 70,000 deacons and 3,000 plus pastors. And we're, we're sitting there and we're, we're talking and somebody asked him a question. I'm glad I didn't ask it um, because of what he said. But it was powerful and I'll never forget it. He said this. They, they, this gentleman asked him about the future and the future of the church. And he said, tell me your vision. We paused. He said, tell me your vision. And then he spoke and he said, you tell me your vision and I'll tell you your future. Because if you can't see it, you can't have it. So you've got to be able to see, not just seeing of what's in the physical. You've got to be able to see beyond the physical and to see in the spiritual and begin to know and to see what God's destiny, what God's best is for you tonight. See, if you're here tonight and you've got financial issues, you need to see yourself beyond financial issues. Tonight, if you're here and you're struggling with an addiction, you've got to see yourself beyond an addiction, and you've got to see yourself healed. Tonight, if you're having relationship issues, you've got to see yourself beyond those issues in order that you can walk where you go, because if you can't see it, you can't have it. There's another word that we really important for tonight that we just got to know and understand, and it's that word, given. You know what that word means in Hebrew? It means given. It's just that easy. <laughs> but it's important to note that it's a past participle. Now, y'all seeing my English come out in me, and my wife's going to be proud of me. It's a past participle word, this word given. You know what that means? It means something that has already taken place and come to completion. Do you know that when Joshua spoke to, when the Lord spoke to Joshua, he said, See, Joshua. See Jericho, see it as defeated, see it as down, see as yourself walking through it, and know, Joshua, that it's already been given to you. See, if you can't see it, you can't have it. And if you don't realize what that word given means, that it's already yours. Do you know when Jesus looks down at your life and my life, he, he doesn't see, man I, man, I hope Jody makes it. Man, if, if Jody will just do this, it, he'll make it. Come on, Jody. Come on, man, move. Do what you got to do. You know, that's not what Jesus does. <laughs> Y'all know what he, you know he sees a, a completed picture of your life and my life. Do you, do you know he sees a, a work and, and destiny uh, done for you? He, he sees the whole picture, and he's sitting there going, Buddy, I've already done this if you'll just step into it. Because, see, title, title. Is given to the God, is given by God, but possession is up to you. Hear this title 
of the land, your destiny, what your, God's best for you has already been given. The title is yours. Already given, done, completed. But possession, <laughs> possession is up to you. You need to hear that tonight. Because see, you, there comes a point in time in life when we stand in places and we go, man, that's too big. That, 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 that problem's unsolvable. It's like the walls of Jericho. You can't get around it. You can't walk over it. It, it. They're invincible. It's over. Let's just throw in the keys and the towel because this deal is done. Let me tell you, that's the devil speaking. Because, see, the promises of God don't have expiration dates. And the promises of God are greater than the circumstance or situation that we find ourselves in. You've got to be able to see it. And then you've got to be able to, to take possession of it. But you know what we do? A lot of us, um, I, I re, I, probably not any of you here, and, and not at my church, by the way. But in some churches where I've been, and not uh, DUNC and not Mount Bethel, so it ain't none of us. But in sometimes in church, you know what? I, I see folks who, um, they give a lot of lip service to change. They give a lot of lip service to change, but that's all they give. They talk about wanting things to be different. They talk about wanting to go uh, further with the Lord and deeper in their relationship with Jesus. They, they talk about seeing their environment and their lives change, but that's really all they're doing is giving it lip service. Do you know it takes more than lip service to change your problems? Do you know it takes more than lip service to transform a destiny? You know, you've got to put some of the talking to side and you've got to start doing some walking because you know what? Faith moves, faith walks, faith changes things. You've got to take steps. You've got to know two words tonight, the keys of dealing with the Jerichos that we face. First, you've got to see it because if you can't see it, you can't have it. And you've got to know that it's already been given to you. All you have to do is move. You know, it reminds me of the story. Y'all don't know the story. John chapter 5, uh, Jesus comes in, uh, and he's going by the pool at Beth Bethesda, and he walks in, and there is a lame man sitting there. Remember, remember the words of Jesus? I always thought this was kind of crazy. He looks down at the guy, and he says, uh, do you want to be made well? That seems crazy, doesn't it? Jesus, why would you say to the man, do you want to be made well? He's lame. He's sitting there. He, surely he wants to walk. Jesus, he wants to be made well. He wants to get up. But notice what happened in the next verse. He offers an excuse. He says, Lord, when the water stirred, because that was the, what would happen. When the water stirred in, in the pool, I don't have anybody to get me up and to put me in. Lord, when, when the water stirred and it begins to move, somebody jumps into the water before me and I can't get in. And what he offered was an excuse. You see, so, so many times our movement into healing and our movement into our destiny and our movement into the place that God has for us is, is followed by a lot of excuses. I, I've offered some of those lately. I'm glad I got some folks around me who keep me accountable. I said, well, hold up, preacher. What was that you said last Sunday? Uh, what was that word you, you shared about moving in faith, preacher? Why are you so afraid today? You know, it just gets me right back in the place where I'm supposed to be. You got to know. You got to be able to see it. Title's been given, but possession is up to you. Are you ready to walk? Are you ready to move? Are you ready to go beyond this and to really do the work that it takes? Because there's going to be a battle. There's going to be a battle. It's coming, but man, you got everything you need in order to win. Amen? What keeps us? You know, when I think about it, what is it that keeps us from moving in to God's destiny and God's promises? Have you ever thought about it? You know, you can, there's a bunch of them, but you know, I think it comes back to, to one word. Unbelief. Unbelief. You see, there is nothing that will solidify your uh, life in the wilderness like unbelief. <laughs> you, can, you start moving in unbelief and just know you're going to hang out in the wilderness for a while. It's just part of it. Unbelief and the wilderness are the same exact thing. That's a, that's a physical picture of what it means when we don't believe. I tell you tonight, we need to believe. I love what Joshua did. When they started circling the, the city of Jericho, do you, know, you remember what he asked them to do? He said, don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. 
See, he remembered what walking in the wilderness was like. And he didn't want them talking and saying things in unbelief. Because if you're going to walk around the walls that are, what, what does it say? They were six foot wide, the bottom one, isn't that right? The, the bottom wall at Jericho was six foot wide. The, the inner wall was 12 feet wide, and, and some have said 50 feet tall. And if you don't have a lot of stuff, it means you don't have guns. I, I'm kind of a, one of those preachers. I'm not really political correct. I like guns and stuff. You know, I would have, If I would have been one of those soldiers walking around, I'd been saying, look, look Lord, where's the guns? We need a catapult. We, we need a, a, one of those things that rams the door. Let, let's do something. Let, you know, let's, let's bring it. But what did he tell them to do? Walk around Jericho and don't say nothing. And don't carry any weapons. You know why? Because he didn't want them talking and saying things in unbelief. He, he didn't want them uh, murmuring and saying things that would get everybody down and they would take their eyes off of, 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 the, of, the, of the big picture and off seeing and, and taking and they would have put it on, uh, the thing, on how big the walls were. We, we, know, how, we know now why the, our ancestors, mama and grandma and them, said that we, they looked like grasshoppers around these people. We, we get that now. We've been here. And they, he didn't want them to say anything, so he told them to be quiet. I love what Proverbs says. I need to look. Proverbs 18, 21. You know it? Talking about our words, it says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. Jesus said it like this. He said, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you, you will be condemned. What that says to us tonight, the truth of that for all of us, is that the words that come out of our mouth are vitally important. The things that we say are, are vitally important. How we discuss our issues and our problems and the circumstances are vitally important. See, the truth in that for us tonight is we need to be careful what comes out of our mouths. We need to be careful of the things that we say because we don't want to be justified in the wrong way. We don't want to connect and, and connect ourselves with the things of the devil and, and begin to tear our situation down or make it worse. But we want to speak words that give life to our situation. So Joshua said, don't say a word. But you know what happened? I believe this happened if I'm standing here. I believe that they started walking around that, that, that building. And I believe as they started making that, that turn around that building and they weren't saying anything and I bet you they were doing some praying and they were thinking and the more they walked, the, the more turns that they made, the bigger they got. I think the more, the, the more they walked that building and, and the more they looked at those walls, the, the bigger their chest started busting out like this. And I'm telling you about, about the fourth time around, I bet they were doing a swag going on. They just bring this. Come on, let this place come on. Let, it, let us go. We're supposed to take this place down. Say, I believe that tonight. You see, sometimes if, 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 before we can deal with our Jericho's God, you see, he has to deal with us. Mm. Those are those hurtful times. You know what they had to do before they came to the promised land, to the edge? You know what Joshua made them all do? They had to be circumcised. All of those who had lived in, in the desert, they had to be circumcised. He said, I don't, want you, I don't want to take anything into this place. I don't want to go into new territory carrying around old stuff. But we need to cut some things. You know what we need tonight? If God's going to do a work in us, because I realize that some of us say, I really can't see it. And I realize tonight that some of us say, I not only can't see it, I'm afraid to go take it. And see, God has to do a work in us. He needs to do a circumcision of the heart so that we can begin to see that which he has promised us and that which he has given us. And when that begins to happen, uh-oh, when you start walking around some walls, you'll do it with your chest bowed out. When you start walking around some walls, you have a swagger in your step. When you start walking around the walls and you can truly begin to see what God has given to you, it's done and said, can you visualize it? When you begin to walk around, you know, he's already given this to me. I'm going to take possession of it. I hope you hear me tonight. If you're in a place and you need to want some walls to come down, 
What's your wall? What's your Jericho? Can you visualize life beyond the circumstance? Can you see it? Because if you can't see it, you can't have it. And then you need to know that God has given it to you. I want to tell you something. Some of my church members are going to hear this for the first time tonight. They know. Our church has been dealing with a lot of financial trouble. Lots of financial trouble. Big time stuff. Big time stuff to the point that we've had to call in the the big guns in order to help us deal with a a building that we can't really pay for. And, And God has just performed miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives. I'm not preaching and I'm not talking to you about something that I have not experienced over and over again. But I'm telling you tonight that I'm walking right smack dab in the middle of it. And I can see life and I can see a world beyond the problem. You know, I was praying a few weeks ago. I get up on uh, Saturday mornings and I walk our church property seven times. Walk it. And I walk and I read the Psalms and I pray. And I try to do it right before 12 because the, our bells come on and it play this song. And I can't remember it, but Luther wrote it. And uh, it, it's a good song anyway. And I actually, there's nobody there so I can sing. Shelly told me on the way up here tonight, I was, I was singing a song that our band's going to play in just a few minutes. And she said, honey, you need to stick to preaching and not singing. <laughs> But I can get out there by myself and I can begin to sing. And the Lord spoke to me as I was walking and he said, Jody, I didn't send you here to save a building. That's Jericho. I brought you here to minister to a city. Now, you know what happened? That was on Saturday and on Thursday night. I went to hear Elizabeth Wolf's Bible study at the Ravinia Club. And you know what she said? She said, somebody here tonight is here because they're supposed to take a city. You remember saying that? It messed me up. It messed me up bad because I'm sitting there going, Lord, hang on now. Hold up, that's big. I'm just, man, I'm just a little preacher, man. I don't know anything about city taking. You hear where I'm going? If you can't see it, you can't have it. And if you don't know, beyond a shadow of a doubt in your heart and in your life that God has in fact given it to you, then you'll never take possession. And you'll wander and wander and wander. And one of these days you'll get to a place and you'll look back and you'll go, oh, just to have one more shot. Just bring Jericho on one more time. Just just let me at it one more time. Why not live a life of regrets? See, what would you do tonight? What would you begin to do today if you knew you couldn't fail? I'm telling you, you can't fail. If God has called you to do something, again, he's provided for you. If you're a believer, uh, it ain't just Rick Bonfam and and, and Pastor John and some of you other, Elizabeth Wolf and Sandra Snell, all of you got that. That's not the people that those, it's not, the promises aren't just for them. They're for you. And God has a destiny for you. Can you see it? And will you walk in it? Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you tonight, God, for just just the opportunity, Lord, to be right here in this moment. God, I I pray tonight that you would speak to hearts. Lord, I pray tonight that you are messing people up right now. God, I I pray tonight that you would uh, bring to mind, you would solidify the Jerichos that we face. And God, you would give us the strength and the courage to move like never before. God, you'd give us the strength to pray harder. God, you'd give us the courage to be bold in our faith. God, that you would bring those around us, God, who are going to be part of our army as we move forward. And God, let it be so tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, tonight is um, Matt and the guys come and, and lead us in worship. This uh, altar uh, is uh, open for you. Tonight is real simple. What's your Jericho? And are you willing to start possessing it tonight? Are you willing to, to move into God's plan and God's purpose for you? If you are, I'd invite you to come.
stood and strummed on your feet. University of Georgia. Brazil was that uh, they were praying for people that couldn't speak English and so you didn't know what they were saying and in the process of praying for them in English and they're staring at you God did unbelievable miracles 15th of May to the end of May I believe everyone here life was totally changed so would you come come not seeing clearly but believing that there, there's a possibility tonight. So come in, come in, make a line between each of them and ask them to pray for you. It's a humble thing to do, but that's the thing to do. Amen. Believe this evening. Believe that God can make a breakthrough. Believe he's going to do a miracle without you even being able to comprehend. You've got to see it. And you've got to believe it. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you sing? There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your prayer. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your i mm -hmm. 